Muy buenas tardes, mi gente. Today is Friday, February 17th. Yeah, half month already. Que se la estén pasando bien y ojalá y esta semana los haya tratado muy bonito. Valentine's weekend. Still, I guess. I don't know. I celebrate this weekend, um, Valentine's, que siempre nos ha pasado, pues no siempre, una vez nomás, like 20 years ago, we went out to celebrate Valentine's Day. It was the worst experience of our life. And um, yeah, no, never again on Valentine's Day. So usually Valentine's Day is for my girls. We do a scavenger hunt. Now I have two. I've been doing this little tradition with my kids, my oldest daughter, since she was a year old. She's now going to be 11 in July. So it's kind of fun. You know, I um, give them clues of where to find their stuff. Um, their dad reads it to them. So we have like a good 20 minutes of just fun. Um, I always cook a steak dinner here at home so we won't miss the experience. And just little things like that. And then on the weekend, we'll go and just celebrate us by ourselves as adults. But I'm even lying because very rarely do we even go out and celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, I did get my Valentine on Valentine. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it was really pretty. I got the whole ensemble con la botella de vino, un pinchocito, and all that stuff. What I usually do is decorate little stuffed animals that are given to either me or the girls, um, depending on the month. So like say this one, I'm gonna put like a little pink skirt on her or something. And every year in February, I'll pull it out with my Valentine decoration. I have other stuff that have been given to my girls. So like St. Patrick's Day, también le hago un little green tutu and put little bows or whatever and that's now my decoration you know i don't put anything to waste pues los ositos también cute you know so yeah i got my wine my little bear chocolates and a balloon which my kid ate because she's just a horrible disaster but thank you so much for my valentine because i love it um uh before i get into the whole topic i want to give a disclosure that obviously the information i'm going to share came from somewhere And that somewhere is google.com. I looked at several different, um, I guess, web pages that just kept popping up with information. So I do not own the rights to anything. I am going to share just one image because my last video was flagged down for copyright. And I just don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so I will be sharing with you guys one picture this show. Um, quiero también mandar todos mis saludos, obviously. So, I want to start with my friend Ivan from San Jose. Hi. Me mandó un saludo the other day in Facebook. Here I am. He watches me. He supports me. Gracias por todo tu apoyo. And I hope you didn't cheat and look up Lupacalia. Chupacabra. Lupacalia. <laughs> and I can share something with you. También quiero mandar saludo a mi mom. Hi, mom. Um, the fan band, everybody, friends, family, and my husband. Because he's a fake fan, guys. He doesn't even watch my stuff. So if after this he tells me WTF, then I'm going to know he really does. But he's just a liar to me. <laughs> yes, he is. Anyways. All right. So we will get straight to the topic now. Okay? I had put up a video last week asking you guys what is... Um, what do the Romans have to do with Valentine? The tradition, this and that, blah, 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 the holiday. Nobody really answered too much. They just said they're going to wait. So here I am going to share with you guys. Okay. So vamos a lo ocurrido. <laughs> okay. So the original, original, original beginning of Valentine has nothing to do with, well, it has something to do, but it has been totally changed up during these years, right? They have narrowed it down to about 1,200 years ago. 1,200 years ago, I'm not lying, that far back. It started off, yes, you got it, in the city of Rome. Okay, now let me tell you guys. It is said that this festival used to happen yearly. 
Some people argue it was a couple days from the 13th all the way to the 15th of February. Others say it was only on the 15th of February. Who knows? I don't know. I wasn't there. If you know, drop a comment and let me know because I tried looking. Everybody gives different opinions, so yo no sé. If you know, let me know. You know I want to know. Anyways, I'm going to start off with a story, and it's going to eventually get there, so don't be like, what the heck is she talking about, okay? Okay, so here we go. It's not a good story unless it starts with once upon a time, right? Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a princess. She had a set of twin baby boys, right? One was named Romulus. The other one was named Remus. Okay. At the time, there was a king named Amulus. He was really jealous of these little babies because he was like, damn, one day they're going to take over and rule me out. I need these two little babies dead. He talks to the princess and tells her, hey, those niños, do away with them. I don't want them. So the princess had to obey orders of the king and she's like traumatized and paranoid and don't know what to do. Encuentra una basket y mete a sus niños adentro. Two little boys. So she goes to the river, loves and hugs and oh my God, tears and everything. She sends the babies downstream on the river. So I van those babies in the basket, right? Down the river, down the river. The bottom somewhere, los encontró una wolf, a she-wolf, by the name of Lupus. Okay? So she found these two little cute babies, and she's like, what the heck? You know? So se los llevó to her cave where she was staying at. It is not really known if it was weeks or months that she had these little tiny babies, but she took care of them. She fed them, you know, kept them warm and everything. Um, there's actual statues of that image. So if you ever see two little babies being fed by a wolf, like, you know, breastfed by a wolf, now you know who they are. It's Romulus and Remus. Okay, so... You know, she, she kept them in her care, took care of these two little babies. So one day, there was a shepherd. You know, I andaba en sus cosas el señor. And he comes to this cave and he finds these two babies. They're still tiny, you know. Like I said, I don't know if it was weeks or months. But yeah, there's anything under nine months, you know, being a baby, they're still small. So he's like, you know, put two and two together that an animal was raising these babies that had them there. So he decided to take these twin boys home to his wife. You know, he took them home, shows up, tells his wife, hey, I found these two little boys, blah, blah, blah. Let's take care of them, this and that. Okay, while well, the years passed by, this couple took care of these children. So now they're adults, right? And um, they decide to, huh, we should start a city. Let's incorporate a city here. Que sabe, que sabe cuánto. You know, this and that, it sounded good. They said, all right, we should, like, go towards where, you know, dad found us in the cave and, you know, start the city there. Okay, yeah, they started, you know, discussing back and forth and fighting like our siblings do. Pero Romulus took it a little bit too far and he killed his brother Remus. Now, he's the only one alive. Nobody's there to fight with him and argue and throw opinions out that we should name it this, name it that. They ended up, he ended up naming the city Rome. Yeah, you guessed it, short for Romulus. So that is where the name of Rome comes from. It originates from that situation. Trip, huh? Yeah, I know. So the actual cave where these babies were found, they gave it the name of Luper Cow. C-A-L at the end. You can find this cave on the southwest foot of the hill, Palatine. So that's where this Lupra Cow um, cave is, okay? Now we're going to fast forward a few years. These priests, by the name of Lupra Kai, C-I at the end, started with this festival. This is where stuff gets good. So this festival was celebrated every year on the 15th of February, 
We're just going to stick to that. We want the 13th, the, whatever, the 15th. Okay. So this festival was a three-piece festival that took place yearly. And the purpose of this festival was to bring purity to the city and promote health and fertility. So yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so the beginning of this festival, se juntan unos padres, the priests, and they're called the Lubrakai, like I said. So they go into this cave, right? And they perform two of the events in there. Una, empiezan with a big feast. Se comen de todo. Y luego, a bunch of wine and alcoholic beverages. So andan bien, oh my god, okay? So comen, beben, andan bien. Okay, part two now. That's a sacrifice ritual that involves two older boys. So teens, you know, like 16, 17, por ahí. Okay, so what these priests do, okay, they sacrifice two or three goats. They have to be male goats and a dog. Why, you ask? I will tell you. The goats symbolize the male, um, fertility, the sexuality, you know, ooh, all that stuff. And now the dog is to symbolize the she-wolf who found these boys. What do these priests do? They sacrifice these animals, okay, and they have the two boys there. With the blood sitting there in like a pool, they dip a knife and they run it across each boy's forehead. So now they have a little line of blood, both of them. Once they're done with the blood, they're supposed to laugh, these two boys. Ha ha, ho ho, he he, okay, whatever. However it is they laugh, they laugh. Now, one of the other priests, tiene un um, bull, little garra or something, dipped in goat milk, so he comes y les quita la sangre. So then now, they take the goat hide, lo de arriba, the fur, and they start making these little strips, right? Y también se hacen un, like, cover. So they cover it front and back because now, at this point, everybody in here is naked. They're not doing anything bad. They're just nude. This is part of this ritual. Okay, so once they do these strips, they turn them into whips. They dip them into the blood, the tip on the blood. Okay, so they come out running into town como locos. Corre, corre. The people are already waiting for them out, you know, outside the cave. So it's like the whole town is involved with this festival, this whole ceremony, this ritual, right? So it is said, it is said that whoever gets whipped with this blood soaked whip ends up pregnant. It's a, a form or a sense of fertility. So during the year, las mujeres que quieren baby y no pueden tener, wait for this day, February 15th, come to this festival y se les pone en frente to get whipped. Now don't take me wrong, this ain't all crazy and mean and like, oh my God, I'm gonna like kill you by whipping you. No, like they just whip, it's something supposedly fun. So, you know, that's why las mujeres se les ponen so they can get whipped because it, it was a belief and a tradition of theirs that if you get hit, you're going to be pregnant. Now, they also said that, you know, young adults at marrying age, which back then was, I mean, 15, 16, 17, were paired off during this celebration to be wed. Not right away, some yes, some no, pero yeah, you know, back then they would pair you off and that was it. Te casas, porque te casas. So this festival has been a continued tradition for years and years. It even lasted after the collapse of Rome. That's another story we'll eventually get into. Let's focus on this. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward a couple more years when the emperor Claudio, Claudius II was in reign. Okay, so this emperor had a large army, right? Tenía muchos soldados aquí, allá y todo. Okay, well, he liked his soldiers unwed. 
que no estuvieran casados, que no tuvieran familia, because in his eyes, they made better soldiers. He didn't like weak nobodies. He didn't like people distracted. So he liked his men single, alone, without anything. Okay, at the same time, en el pueblo este, había un padre que se llamaba Valentino, Valentine. Okay, so este padre, like most and all priests that are really committed to their, you know, religion, whatever. He, he felt for the people, like, you know, he felt so bad because there's all these muchachos and, you know, with their sweethearts and they want to get married, but here is Don Claudio diciéndoles que no. So, el padre los casaba. He would marry all these couples in secret. Nobody knew this and this and that. Okay, pues empezaron los chismecitos que this and this. When Claudio found out, he sent his men to pick up the priest incarcerated. Once they took him in, he ordered his men to beat the priest with clubs and behead him. Ya se cayó ahí. What is the point of this story? The priest's name was Valentine and the date was February 14th. Do the math. Yeah, I know. Okay, so then we're going to fast forward a couple more years. Había un señor in this town again, que se llamaba Valentino también. I guess Valen Valentino was a big name back then and a popular one at that. If you don't know the meaning of Valentino, it's a Latin word which means strength. You would like kind of compare it to valiente, you know, like you're brave, Spanish word. I would say Valentino, valiente, strength, you know, it all adds up. Anyway. Valentine, Valentino comes from the Latin word strength. Well, this señor was a healer. He would tell people, you know, you're, you know, you're sick, you have something going on. Yo te curo, this and this, this and that. So, encontró una muchacha que no miraba. She was blind. And, you know, he's talking to her, this and that. So, she's like, I can't even see you. So, he tells her, I'm a healer. Te voy a curar. So the girl's like, I was born blind. I don't think you can. Well, whatever he did, the chunta this and that, la curó a la muchacha. And she could see. Well, when this was going on, one of the soldiers seen and this and that. So right away, it's like, what the heck is wrong with this guy? Is he like, you know, a saint or a brujo? Or like, what is he, you know? So the chisme got back to Claudio's, Claudio. And he ordered his men to... Come get this guy again. Y lo metieron al prison. He went to prison. He was there a couple of days. And while he was in there, this man, Valentino, wrote a tiny little note to the, the girl, the blind girl that he cured. So, you know, he said, I fell in love with you, blah, blah, blah. I'm in here, this and that. And it was a comma. And he signed it, your forever Valentine. That is the saying we all know now current 2023 every year valentine cards that's pretty much the print okay a couple of days later también lo colgaron lo mataron don claudius and the date again was february 14th two valentinos february 14th had to do with love now we're getting even more somewhere ¿verdad? okay so let's forward 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 normans also started a holiday very similar to the actual now celebrated Valentine's Day, which is kind of a trip because I know now us women use it Galentine as a girl's gathering and going out. Well, see, this Galentine goes back to like 1400s and the Normans, you know, invented this holiday on the same day, which was February 14th. But their meaning of it is a woman lover. So obviously the majority of times you find a man that loves women. So it was a day to celebrate the love you have for a woman. So that's where a lot of these little gifts started coming out, this and this, you know, and it started like forming an actual, you know, holiday. Okay, fast forward a couple years later, now we have Shakespeare. So Shakespeare's writing about all this Valentine tragedy because that's what Shakespeare was known for, 
writing tragedies and love sick stuff and blah 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 and there was also another writer very popular at the same time his name was chaucer so between these two men they started elaborating more and more about how love behind the holiday you know this and this galentine's blah 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 so people started reacting like hey you know it's let's make it like big you know let's start doing this and that and you know make it a holiday of love you know like in espanol el dia de san valentin es el dia del amor y la amistad so it's not necessarily romantic it's a day to you know give recognition to your loved ones period friends or your lover so this was really big out there in europe because i guess that's where these writers were from okay so now gets the now we know okay we're gonna forward it all the way to the new world us now okay the year is 1913 uh, the Hallmark company out in Kansas City got the great idea. Hey, let's print out these greeting cards, mass produce them, and see how they do. The light bulb went on. They did just as was discussed, and guess what? It was genius. They sold so much that year, they started the whole planning of the next year, and the next year, and the next year. And that's where Valentine cards, greeting cards, originated from. Kansas City, 1913. And well, after all this, you know, the rest is history. I looked up what is the amount of cards sold today for Valentine's Day. The number was 1.3 billion with a B that are sold yearly just on Valentine's Day. Now the amount that is actually purchased is 145 million. And there's three most popular items that are sold for this holiday. Pretty sure you could guess them. Roses, wine, and cards. Roses, they said mass produce, like the people get ready year round to, you know, get these roses growing and ready 200 million they produce yearly and have ready for valentine's day that's big huh so don't take me wrong there's other flowers that get given out also but roses are in the lead and this tradition goes back to the 1700s when you know all this was still new and galentine's and you know give her a flower and all this romantic stuff for valentine's day which was Lupercalia. So, you know, I wondered about chocolate, like why always chocolate and wine and cards and roses? Okay, roses is obviously done. We talked about the cards. Now let's talk about the chocolate. So there was a guy in 1861 by the name of Richard Cadbury. Does the name sound familiar? A ver, think about it. Cadbury. Cadbury, Easter egg, the bunny, the lion. Yes, you're right. This man was new to the whole candy chocolate industry. So he decided to get in on the capitalism. He was like, hey, todos están haciendo dinero. I want some too. So he had the genius idea to pack chocolates into a heart-shaped box that had decorations of rosebuds que son flores, the roses, and cupids on top. Genius, I think so. It was a total success. That's where the chocolates came into play for Valentine's Day. He was the one that put them out there. Now let me tell you though, even though he's a Cadbury, he's not the same one that does the eggs. Although they are all same family. So it's in the family, not just him though, but you know, it was there. That's their whole family company, Cadbury Chocolate. This year, I read that America, America was said and believed to be spending $26 billion on Valentine's Day. Not just roses, chocolates, and cards, but presents. Um, dinners, trips, 
you know, everybody celebrates different. It is also known that there is so many couples that get engaged on Valentine's Day and others that actually get married on Valentine's Day. So they're counting all this as a whole because it's in the whole Valentine's Day honor. You know, they're, they're in love. Let them be in love. Last little guy I want to talk about before we close it out, and that's Cupid. Yes, little baby Cupid, all cute y gordito, right? And su pamper. Okay. So, little Mr. Cupid, how did he come to be? Okay. He goes back to the times of the gods, right? 1382. Okay, so Cupid was born, and his mom was Venus, the goddess of love, and his dad was Mercury, which is the messenger, okay? So here it is. What better baby to assign the important task of delivering the message of love than Cupid, right? Well, a little bit down the line, they decided to ad adopt his image as a saint, Saint Cupid, this and that. But his origins are that. They were the, of the gods, so they decided to make him the messenger of love, combining his parents. That's a cute story in itself, so I'll take it. I'll buy it, you know? Well, that's all I got for you guys today behind Valentine's Day. Galentine's Day and Lupercalia. I hope that the information I gave you was fun and a trip. And yes, follow me guys. Follow me. I am on Instagram, on TikTok. I have Pinterest. If you are not my subscriber yet here on YouTube, please do so. Like, subscribe, and hit the pinchy campanita and claim your guys' free gift from El Chilocito. I still have three gifts to give out that nobody has claimed come on guys i get subscribers but nobody claims it come on i'm not giving my mug right now and thank you guys too i did hit 27,000 followers two days ago like i always say i appreciate you guys so much thank you for all the love and the support i'm right here if you need to get a hold of me got an idea for a topic which i appreciate all you guys sending me stuff también the email is tucomadreb at gmail.com or get a hold of me on social media it takes me a while because i'm not too big on messaging but i will eventually get to you i promise so con eso los dejo que tengan un nice weekend don't drink and drive guys get a ride lift uber sale cheaper y stay safe stay sane y los adoro hasta luego bye